Hello and welcome to this video round recap for round seven yeah for the Tata Steel Tournament 2016 again a little bit late but I'm happy to manage in the first place I couldn't do it yesterday I had an all um, own over the board event and it took a lot longer than I thought so no chance to do it right after the round let's get going um, and I'm starting with um, yeah, as I tend to do with the less interesting games, getting to the more interesting ones later. We had a couple of interesting games. Okay, let's see. Tomaszewski Adams. We got a Queen's Gambit declined. And um, nowadays they tend to allow the exchange variation because a particular plan, also here employed by Adams, has gained lots of popularity. And this is this line with knight to h5. I'm, I'm still a little bit puzzled why they in, insert h6. <laughs> I don't understand really. Maybe I have to invest uh, time one day to understand why h6 is essential to play. Anyway, the knight h5 plan is very decent for black. It really is. Yeah, black gets this long castles in. And um, in this position, it doesn't have that much to fear because, well, the central breakthrough is White's most um, obvious idea, like f3, e4, difficult to do. What you also can do, you can play on the on the queen side, like knight a4, yeah, ideas like that, then rook c1, but it also takes a long time. That position is quite solid for black, and it has been for a number of years, but it only recently has caught on with the top level. So Tomaszewski is ultimately preparing for the e4 break. Okay, nice little idea there, but black stays very solid, yeah? Okay, Tomaszewski gets e4 in, but black can take, 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 and play rook d8. Yeah, and here we see that black's pawn structure looks a little bit loose. Yeah, there's e6 pawn, and those are a little bit loose, but there's also C, oops, I'm sorry, C5 to worry about for white. It's always under some pressure. And Check. the way it went actually, Check. after some more trades, Check. they agreed to a draw already. Yeah, not very exciting. That line is super solid for black and currently um, tough to crack. Also reason why nowadays, um, if we go back, in that move order, the exchange variation was um, played um, in the vast majority of games like 10 years ago. It was really believed that black has to suffer a little bit in that line. But nowadays with knight h5, uh, things look up and this makes more and more white players to go for knight f3 here and simply don't, um, don't trade on d5. Okay, that was the first game. Not very exciting as we said I'm starting with the um, less interesting games. Yeah, we had the game Navara Kayakin as well. And um, yeah, that was arguably less thrilling even. <laughs> yeah, okay. We've got the Semislav with Queen C2 and Kayakin goes for this line with eight E5. And uh, yeah, over, over breakfast, I had a quick look at um, some some of the broadcasts that was done yesterday live. And uh, Jan Gustafsson uh, coined a term there to Berlin nice. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, to get um, get the position simplified to a draw. It's called Berlin nice nowadays. And um, this is what E5 tends to do. White has a couple of ideas um, besides what he's doing. Yeah, for example, you could argue that uh, isn't that isn't that an IQP? Yes, it is something like this. For example, White can do, but um, all in all, he's very solid still. Yeah, the IQP is not so much of a weakness. Black can develop freely, and uh, tends to um, hold a draw quite comfortably. This is what White is doing there quite often. Yeah, trying to completely blast open the position in the center and using his extra tempi. I mean, it's not much, but if we look here, 
white has a little bit more in, in development and now actually wins that pawn. However, we see that black gets a very active position. Yeah, already here, black has got rooks active and he will also activate the queen. Um, it's very difficult to do something here with white. And in fact, this is a heavily theoretical line. Something like that is um, probably known to experts. And we've seen that Navarra was actually blitzing out his moves. Yeah. So, um, okay, here he started to think. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, white has that pawn, but we see that black is very active. He's got ideas like pushing this. And all in all, the likelihood of this um, getting to a position where black is getting the material back for his um, activity is very high. Like here I am, pressure on d5, on d4. And this is actually funny, yeah? black now has two pawns down, but he's so active. What are you doing there? A couple of things are going on. Um, yeah, what is white supposed to play? If you play some um, kind of, uh, actually you have to cover f2, I'm sorry. Yeah, so knight f3 is what, what he did. That is probably the only move anyway. And now rook e2, e2. Looking at f2. Okay. And here we go. Well, there's lots of lots of pressure here on f2 now. And uh, what Navarra now does um, wasn't completely forced. He played rook d1 and... Uh, like this, he Check. gave the queen now, yeah, this this kind of thing. This is a draw. It wasn't necessary to do that. He also could have played a bit differently if we go back here. Something like Check. this. And uh, d6 also seems to work. But uh, he probably figured that this um, queen sacrifice is a draw. Yeah, here black can, uh, can take, for example, but after king h1, it's not clear that it helped him that much. Now we have to see black is still still a pawn down. And here things are not clear. Yeah, if you take d6, rook d1, queen here and queen d5, there's also stuff happening around the, the black king. But okay, he decided to return Check. or give away the queen there. And it, it's probably just a draw. The d pawn is dangerous. Check. And we got this uh, this trade D against G pawn, after which it really is a draw. Something like that is a pretty clear, straightforward fortress. Yeah, black has no way forward here. Everything protects each other, and white is just staying. Yeah, some brief excitement in this game, but all in all, um, a draw was very much predictable after that very drawish opening. In fact, this is a very drawish opening, this kind of position. Black is... Yeah, giving away a pawn, but it's so active that he will most likely get the pawn back. And then there's simply not much play left in the position as it's completely symmetrical in a way. It's no, there's no tension in terms of pawn structure or anything like that. Okay, the next game I'm going to check is Vayi against Wesley. So we had a, a Spanish opening here. Where are my notes? Here are my notes. And uh, Wesley is going for the open Spanish, the open rule that was discussed earlier in the event between Giri and Caruana. And it seems that they went for heavily theoretical line, which is nowadays played quite often, it seems. Yeah, it's a, an interesting position here with the bishop now covering the um, d3 pawn. And um, yeah, it leads to a complex play. What white is often trying to do is to isolate that d3 pawn, to put some piece on d4 and then trying to grab it. This is also what Yi tries in the game. See, puts bishop here. But we see that it is not so easy to grab the pawn. If he grabs it now, then black can take and take b3. That doesn't lead to much. He tried this. But now it takes, takes and c5. And black is um, yeah, getting lots of activity. White took the pawn. Black takes d4. And here we see that it feels pretty equal. Yeah, 
the most surprising about this game actually I found was that if we uh, look at this, black is supporting his d-pawn and um, should be okay. The most support, um, surprising thing was actually for me that they uh, sure. continued to play this position for ages. Yeah, it seems very drawish, but uh, maybe, um, yeah, I, I cannot, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, of course, you can always play on and, and see if something, something materializes, but it, uh, I mean, they played this till move 70 <laughs> and Check. there was never really anything going on. I mean, Check. maybe uh, Wesley, so he intended to make a draw. But if anybody, black is better, of course, yeah, because of the pawn structure. But maybe he got uh, kind of interested in the game again after Check. he got in this like F5, F4. That looks like a little bit of an advantage for black. And uh, it is it is certainly easier for black to play. But um, still, white should hold, and this is what why he Check. did at the end. No, this it still looks scary yeah, with the with the protected passer, but white also has counterplay, so they agree to a draw. Yeah, uh, here, yeah, move seventy, very long um, play in that in that rook ending, but uh, really there wasn't there wasn't much going on. Okay, now for the more interesting games we've got um next game i want to check is mamid yarov with white against hu yifan and uh, i got a nimzo indian here where that transposes to a rogozin very very quickly yeah the rogozin um seems to be hu yifan's main um opening uh, for black here in this event against d4 and uh, well she has played it a lot before so it's not um, something she specifically uh, put into her repertoire for the for this tournament but still it's something that um, people can prepare against let's say it seems she seems to very reliably um, going for it yeah what Mohamed Yarov goes for here is um, a somewhat a somewhat restrained approach not a bad one Check. checks to get the knight to c6 and then place the move e3. I know that these kind of setups with um, the bishop inside the chain, they sometimes look a little bit passive, but this is sometimes deceptive because with um, keeping the bishop inside of the chain, um, white in some way also makes sure that this piece is not traded. Yeah, so it will very often lead to a somewhat um, slower start of the game, but ultimately it keeps more pieces on the board than, let's say, bishop g5 and then takes on f6. Yeah, this is something, for example, if you play bishop g5 here and black plays h6, white is normally taking, as white has issues with things like that in some kind of, some kind of form. So instead of going for a position like that with some simplification, E3 is probably um, yeah a little bit more interesting long term because it keeps more pieces on the board. Interesting is uh, well, yeah. It's it's at least it's a very very viable alternative. Castles for black, queen c2 back. So the queen doesn't do much anymore on a4. It was just put there to drive the knight to c6. Bishop to d6, and now this. This is one of Black's ideas in this opening to get in the move e6, e5. That kind of uh, structure that we get now after, um, yeah, after this and uh, when, when does he play it? <laughs> White plays d5. That kind of structure is well known and is believed to be um, a little bit, a little bit better for white usually. In fact, Hu Yifan had various uh, opportunities to capture on d4. That would have been also a viable choice, something like that. That leads to a position that could easily happen from a queen's gambit accepted. She is probably a tempo down, if I'm not mistaken, even though I'm not quite sure. Took two moves to go to d6. e6, e5 takes two moves. Yeah, she's a tempo down. So keeps the tension and goes for this position with d5. Yeah, why is this a little bit better for white? Space is so often the uh, the answer. White has a little bit more space 
and um, potentially a black can have trouble with the c file or white having a piece coming to c5. Um, we see that in the game, Hu Yifan got that bishop traded and now covered c7. So this kind of position always has to be a little bit of something for white because it's not clear what black's idea is. Black is mostly just sitting there and uh, cannot do much. Yeah, of course, there might be people saying, ah, doesn't white have a bad bishop? Yeah, looking at all those pawns. Yeah, you know, this is not really the case because white has more space. And if you have more space, this uh, consideration is not that relevant anymore, especially because um, usually the bishop that is uh, looking at its own pawns tends to improve automatically over time because the side with less space tries to break out of his or in this case her position um, and then the bishop improves automatically. For example, if black sometimes plays the move c6 here to make sure that the d5, b5 pawns are, are gone off the board, then the bishop automatically gets better. So there's not much to worry about there. Yeah, in fact, we had a, a further developments of the game. We had queens traded. Yeah, white got that piece to c5. And it looks nice for white, but it's still not clear how he's going to do something concrete. Yeah, who you find defended this, uh, this nicely. It's passive, but it's very solid. And now she got in c6. So what is happening here? Is she equalizing this? White took, took here, took a5. And we get to the critical position. This is the critical position here. She should have played the move bishop to e8, just retreating the bishop and keeping this pressure on. And in fact, right next move, you can take the pawn back and equalize completely. For example, something like, um, yeah, what is white supposed to do? Yeah, let's say you look at the a4 pawn. Yeah, then rook a8 is coming. Knight moves and it's totally equal. Or what can white do if you go here, then black is just taking. Yeah, it's uh, it just, um, the problem is, this is not difficult to see that this is equal. The thing is, she immediately took here and this has a big, a big drawback. Yeah, rook b8, rook knight c3. Of course, you cannot take here. This loses Check. everything immediately. So knight takes c3 and now the move bishop g4. Maybe she didn't see that move. Very likely. Yeah, now it's, it's really awkward. The rook is attacked. If you take here, check knight c6. Yeah, so what are you supposed to play? f5 is happening in the game. If you go rook c7, then knight a6. And the rook is overloaded. Yeah, she had to go f5. And now after takes, 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 takes. Check. Remember Jarov took here and at the end gets a completely winning endgame. SG5 is not going to be... Check. Yeah, Check. cannot be held in the long run. Here it, Check. it uh, was taken. Check. And here Hu Yifan resigned, losing the first game, here her first game in that event. And it was really unfortunate in a way because she made exactly one mistake in the game. And uh, that happened to be the decisive one. If you go bishop e8, black gets the pawn back and just gets the draw that she probably uh, deserved due to careful defense up to that point. But um, a single mistake can cost the game. This is the <laughs> often the big issue in chess. Yeah, you play a perfectly okay game and then just one mistake uh, spoils, spoils the whole day in a way. Unlike in, in other sports like tennis or so, yeah, you can play complete, complete, um, yeah, complete crap, let's say, and uh, then all of a sudden, yeah, you flick the switch uh, and uh, improve, improve your play, less unforced errors, and all of a sudden, a big comeback is staged, and uh, a player who's down uh, like one or two sets can can win the game still. And it's just one 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 mistake, and you're done. 
So that was Mohamed Yarov, who you find. Let's have a look at the Dutch duel. We've got Van Veli with white against Anish Giri. They had a Slav defense, and Van Veli is going for the slow Slav as they all do nowadays. And Giri plays bishop g4. Yeah, black has a choice there. e6 we have seen in this tournament already. Or also bishop f5. All those moves are okay. In uh, the bishop g4 line, white tends to go for these kind of things with g4. And uh, this leads to uh, interesting play. White has got more space. Yeah, like this on the king side. And tries to harass the bishop. However... We have to look at one particular thing here. Black is taking on c4 now. Knight c4, h5, g5, knight d5. We have to look at one particular thing. Uh, one thing that is often underestimated is that white is running some risk with this kind of position because it is not clear where white's king is going to be. For black, it's pretty easy to say. Black will castle short and will be reasonably safe. Yeah, the bishop on g6 is covering h5 and it's very little uh, white can do to get at to uh, get to um, um, black's king quickly. So white has some issues with his king long term. He has to be quite circumspect there. And we see that in a couple of moves here. We've got Black coming in with e5. Yeah, white cannot win a pawn if he does so. Black goes queen to e7, for example. And white absolutely cannot play stuff like that. Yeah, here he will just get, uh, yeah, under heavy fire, stuff like this. Check. It's not going to end well. Just a sample line with some cooperative play, but white cannot take on e5. What he did is okay. It just said, as I said, how is white's king ever going to be safe? He cannot castle long anymore, and castling short is what he did. But don't underestimate that this king has no pawn shield. Yeah, those pawns are far advanced. Yeah, c5 now by Van Veli. And black's play, and this is what I think, if you give this to a computer, by the way, it gives zero, 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 yeah, equal play. That might be true, but it is still difficult to play for white in the long run because you always have to worry that your king uh, would end up in some trouble. Just imagine uh, in some situation, not like here, but imagine we've got some pieces traded and the black queen enters on g4 or something, and then you, you lose h4 and your king is wide open. This is the problem. So black's plan here is pretty simple. Yeah, trade some pieces, not all of them, keep queens on and open up the position. And white has to be careful not get to get into some kind of direct trouble on the king. And let's we'll see what happens in the game. Giri is opening it up with b6. Let's get traded and now d5 and now e4. Yeah, black's idea is knight here, knight here and mate in an ideal world. Hmm? Takes, and we see how it opens up. And now black has ideas, yeah? The knight can come in somewhere and you don't know really what white is going to do. He's got that got that weak king. Um, in this position, um, Stockfish wants to play knight e2 and claims um, about equal play. I actually think that after knight e5, um, let's say bishop takes, rook takes, I still rather be black because black is more comfortable still. Yeah, the king is weak. This is weaker than b6, but this is better than the game. Yeah, we see in the game when Vele goes here, and uh, we have something similar actually happening, but now he goes to e2 and loses time in the process. So black now has a position comparable to the one before, but with extra moves. And now the knight immediately sinks into d3. What a good knight, yeah? And what is white doing here? Well, he just sits on his weaknesses. And that pawn also got lost. Yeah, 
And now we see what I was talking about. The queen sometimes can just enter. And now white is uh, just losing material. Rook f3 using the pin. A pawn. Second pawn. And the third pawn. Yeah, so at the end, a pretty clear win for Giri. And, you know, I think this is a risky position for white long term, even though even though computers think it's OK. But, you know, you, you have to deal with this, that the king is weak and this kind of uh, yeah non-solid play is, is, is getting you in the long run, especially if you use as much time as Venveli does here. Yeah, you see like here to move 20 was down to 15 minutes. And playing this kind of position with the weak king is no fun anyway, and especially not if you are if you are down on time. Okay, let's go to the next game. Yeah, it's Caruana Ding the Run. I had to pull this game up from the library. Yeah, so what do we have here? We have a um, Spanish, and we have no Berlin. Yeah, this is um, I think is it a Berlin free tournament? Maybe we got one, like in the first round or so, but it, it's not. We see more of those here and uh, typically leading to more interesting play. Yeah, 63 by Caruana, one of the main lines, rookie one is the other one, but d3 is one of one other way to avoid the, the marshal nowadays and to, to introduce some interesting ideas. So a3 and black goes for a quick c5 and bishop to e6, an interesting line. Yeah, white has a couple of ideas. Knight d5 is um, the most um, frequent the scene move, but um, Caruana comes with a new idea. He plays knight to h4, interesting. Clear intentions, the knight wants to go to f5. Um, two versions of that. Sometimes you can directly go there. In some cases, white might play queen f3 and then put the knight on f5. The first thing to check is what happens after knight takes e4. This typical tactical idea has to be checked. In this case, however, it is clearly too risky. Um, white can go knight e4, bishop h4, takes, takes and queen h5. Yeah. This kind of uh, position here is much too scary for black. Yeah. Also take note that Caruana has blitzed all this to knight h4. So it, um, I mean, besides the fact that it's pretty clear that knight takes e4 is not good, um, having this, um, yeah, doing this against someone who has prepared the idea is uh, particularly questionable. Um, yeah, Ding now goes with c4 after some thought. Um, that move is of course not pointless at all. It blocks the bishop. However, it seems to be risky, this bishop, I mean. It um, it seems to seems to be risky somewhat. The reason is that white now went knight f5. Quite clearly that was the idea. Takes, you cannot keep that. Takes and now castles. And uh, the thing is that after takes and bishop g5, um, black is now sitting in a position where he has to reckon with bishop takes f6 and knight coming to d5, where it will be excellently placed long term. This happened in the game, yeah? that knight coming to d5. Even though under somewhat more favorable circumstances, as now black doesn't have a bishop, but a knight to challenge the white piece on d5. In any case, white is better here. Yeah, the pawn on c4 is weak, a6 is weak, d6 is weak. So there are some weaknesses to play against. Um, and um, yeah, white only has the somewhat... Um, of f5 pawn. That is, however, also limiting black in some way. So black tries to get rid of that knight. Yeah, He sacrifices a pawn for doing that and activates. Yeah, white's position is clearly better 
but winning it is another matter. After b4, d5 and uh, queen c6, we see that black has a decent center and some play on the c file. It's not clear at all that that white um, has a win here. The way it went, check that the way it went, um, black was active, pretty active. And fast forwarding a little bit, yeah, we also have to take him out, it's a pawn, but it's not yet uh, a very dangerous pawn. Yeah? B5 is not um, that quick. So a couple of moves later, we come to a critical situation. Yeah, black has counter play there. Yeah, and here, yeah, here there were one or two moments where um, Ding could have played could have played better. Um, here, Queen d7 was a lot stronger than what he played. He played Rook c6. After Queen d7, I think Black's drawing chances are pretty good. This is attacked. This is attacked, and a5 is under fire. So it's not quite clear what White should do. Yeah, if he moves Queen b1, for example. Black just plays a waiting move and asks White what he's doing. And it's very difficult to improve here. If you move this away, then this this gets lost. Yeah, computers just gives equal, completely equal. This was played, however. Queen takes f5. Rook c3 was, was tougher. Rook c3 was tougher. But again, that was not played. It it's still it's questionable if black can hold, but it's a somewhat somewhat tougher defense. Yeah, you still have to deal with that weakness here. Yeah. After this, however, oops, I keep pressing that. <laughs> After uh, this, however, it seems that Black is just lost here. Yeah? He's two pawns down on one flank, Check. and we uh, don't see Check. any particular counterplay happening. Mm, yeah. Check. Even the rook endgame is pretty easy win. Check. White can just advance his Check. pawns and doesn't have to um, Check. be worried much. Check. Yeah, this is an important motif now. The king can enter and is shielded by its own pawn from checks from the back. Check. Yeah, this was also possible. Check. Yeah, and now we see that ending. Check. Well, I really played for a long time. I didn't see that. <laughs> I stopped a couple of moves earlier when I prepared prepared the game. So a uh, very important win by Caruana. Yeah, for the standings, we had um, before the round Caruana and Ding on plus two. So Caruana moves up to plus three. Very strong score. And he missed a win against, uh, against Giri in an earlier game. So it could have been even better. So let's look at the, the final game in this video. Yeah, final game to check is Elian of Carlsen. Here we go. Carlsen is um, now on some kind of a small role. Yeah? He's got two wins in a row. And let's see what he can do with black against the very solid Elianov. Queen's Gambit? No, Catalan. Yeah, Catalan is um, Elianov's main opening there. And um, Carlsen is going for bishop b4 check. This is... Um, very popular nowadays and is a very good middle of the road approach that black can try if he wants to play i mean not like trying to simplify everything down to a draw if he wants some kind of fight but without uh, risking anything extraordinary with which black can also do by let's say snatching the pawn and playing b5 or something like that which is probably kind of kind of unsound yeah 
But yeah, what Black is doing with Bishop before is check going for a game, let's say, and see what happens. Bishop d2 and back. Yeah, this flicking this in, as I mentioned um, in an earlier video for the Tata C coverage, is the idea of that check to get the bishop on that d2 square. It's not so well placed there. White quite often wants to fianchetto it, and in some cases also knight bd2 can be useful. So what that means is that here in this kind of position, white um, yeah, rather would have the bishop on c1 to play queen c2, b3. He goes for queen c2 and knight e4 now by Carlsen. This is already slightly offbeat. Yeah, c6 is the far more normal move. But still, this has been played. It's not a new position. c6, knight c3. And now Carlsen goes for an interesting move, g5. This is not a new move. It has been played back in the 1963 World Championship match between Tiger and Petrosian at Bodwinnik. Yeah, Bodwinnik was a huge um, fan of the Stonewall Dutch. And um, therefore, he continued with f5. Petrosian actually decided to go to c1, which I don't think is a bad idea. It doesn't look so aggressive, but the bishop is better on b2 than somewhere on e3. And uh, Bodwinnik played with f5 then. And they got an interesting position. This is what I meant with um, an approach for black to get a game going and to, to play something interesting without risking too much. This is um, an interesting kind of position where long term you will have conflict on the king side, but you're not taking um, some yeah, irresponsible risk, let's say, by snatching a pawn and exposing yourself. Um, I end up went to e3, however, and now very interesting play by Carlsen. Of course, you can play f5 and it would fit into the position, but he played knight to d6. And this is quite an interesting idea. Yeah, Black is attacking the c4 pawn and asks White what he's going to do about it. If White now takes a very simple approach and takes on d5, then after e takes, I think Black is perfectly fine. The bishop on g2 is um, yeah is blunted yeah, against this d5 c6 structure and black still has ideas to play a later um, advance with the f pawn the knight on d6 also is nicely positioned to facilitate a possible bishop to f5 or knight to f5 if that square is controlled so Aryanov's b3 is um, logical. Black now could have taken on c4. However, this is a risky decision. Clearly is. Yeah, white um, has a number of ideas. Even just, I mean, he can also, what I'm trying to say is he does not need to take on c4, but uh, can play like a centralizing move. It's difficult to expose yourself on the king side and then open up the center like that. Even the simple capture like this, this, and now later just like e4 it will be difficult for black to handle you you want the center closed and Carson goes for knight f5 this is a better move i think than, than, than taking an idea is here for black to simply to take the bishop grab the bishop pair white cannot um, really remove the bishop if he moves it again this is happening and i think you're hard pressed to to play this position. It's still not uh, simple in a way uh, that black has won a pawn, but it's also not very convincing. Black's position is exposed, but it's a big center pawn. So I understand what Elianov did. He played g4. Interesting move. This, this. And now this next move and uh, the following play by Carlsen is, is very nice. I, I like the whole game uh, a lot, actually. Um, here black could have played um, yeah, a normal move. I'm not quite sure what that would be because Carlsen's move is, is just a lot stronger than any other move. Um, yeah, let's say you play, I don't know what, bishop f6 or so. Yeah, then white will come with e4 and open up the center. And well, hmm, yeah. What he's playing is just so much stronger. He plays b5, directly attacking white c4 pawn. 
and getting for play here. And the big thing is you get this idea in also that can dislodge the white knight and makes playing e4 much more difficult. Uh, isn't that a pawn sacrifice? Yeah, it is. But black has very nice compensation here. For example, um, simple moves, let's say, like queen b6 are quite okay here now. Yeah, like, let's say, a4 and black develops, rook c8. He's got counterplay on the weakened, the weakened squares and e4 is not going to happen. Yeah, I note that this bishop sometimes has a square. Yeah, okay, you have to cover g5. But, you know, black is doing things on the queen side and preventing e4 in the center. So his weakened king side doesn't really is so much of a factor. And note that he has the two bishops, which is good long-term, good long-term play. Yeah, Elianov didn't want to do that. He wanted to do something in the center, e4, yeah, blasting things open. Yeah, and now we see Karl's idea, he goes b4. He also could have taken on c4. This is not a ridiculous decision, but it's also pretty, well, it's not so consistent, yeah? You wanted to dislodge that knight with b4, and now you, you grab material here. For example, after e5, um, knight b6, and let's say knight e4, white is getting pieces near the black king. I don't like this so much. I think what he was playing is, is just uh, is just strong. I mean, this is uh, some, some typical kind of computer suggestion, but this is a more human move because now what is the knight going to do? You have to go to some awkward spot or sacrifice it. And Elyanov decided to go for it. Yeah, he sacrificed the piece, which is interesting. Very interesting move. He could have, of course, just gone to a4. That was possible. After which black is probably going to take. And after recapture, let's say pawn takes here, he's going c5 or possibly e5. One of the two moves. I'm not quite sure what's better, but let's say after e5. This is an interesting choice. Um, and now white goes d5, let's say. Look how bad this bishop is. <laughs> it really, just looking at his own pawns, and black has excellent play on the dark squares. The whole position is super complicated and certainly um, yeah, exactly what Carlsen wanted from this game. Yeah, I think Elyanov's decision is, uh, is very brave. Yeah, he just sacrifices the piece. And it is an interesting position. We have to be perfectly honest. Yeah, if we look, if we look here, it takes. Now important, not uh, going anywhere else but b8. If black, let's say, goes to f6, then c7 is a problem. After queen takes, knight g5, there's immediate threats. So not very advisable. Knight b8 is better. It looks a, a bit wacky, <laughs> undeveloping, but it looks at that important c6 pawn. And this is something that white probably wants to keep that pawn. This is why he went queen to e4. Yeah, a computer suggests something like this, but after knight c6, I think, let's say knight g5, bishop g5, bishop here, and rook b8. Um, yeah, black is in good shape. Yeah, queen takes something like this. If we do a quick count, seven pawns against four, so it's um, a fair compensation, just, just if we just do counting. But don't forget that white's king is probably... Um, arguably even less safe than black's king and black's bishops especially that bishop here will be will be quite strong yeah this was played and cardens of course going to go, uh, goes for f5 activating activating everything here yeah takes takes yeah and now Elianov goes queen d5 and it really seems like after Check. that i mean there's no clear improvement but after that, knight a6, it becomes clear that this peace sacrifice was interesting, but ultimately not totally sufficient, as the knight has uh, that blockading quality. Now the c pawn is not running away, and you can pressurize the d5 pawn.
now c7. Nice little shot. Has Carlsen overlooked this? No, he didn't. The thing is that after knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes, the material situation has uh, has changed. Now black has two bishops against rook and pawn. But um, this is uh, even more favorable than the piece for pawns because the bishops will be super strong. And we see what happens. First bishop to be four, then bishop to be seven. And this is a fantastic diagonal for this piece. Elianov tried to break the kingside structure open with h4, but we see black's piece is getting activated very quickly. The knight is coming to to d5 ultimately. Yeah, and white has a check there. Oh, no, he, he actually, um, sorry, I didn't know Elianov already resigned here. Yeah, I had looked at the game earlier and uh, I thought that he still gave the check on h6. Yeah, he resigned here already. There is nothing nothing to do here against black attacking and promoting the e-pawn. There's rook d2 coming also. Yeah, white can give a check, check for example. I thought that he actually did that, but it didn't seem to be. Yeah, here you're out of moves. Eh? The rook has no squares, for example. If white is trying to stop the pawn, there is rook d2 and here that pawn will promote. Yeah, this was, I think, an excellent game by, by Carlsen. He shot for um, a somewhat forgotten idea in the opening here with his g5, and then came up with knight d6, setting um, Elianov new problems. And with knight f5, again, it was a very tough decision now for white. And do you want to move the bishop again and give up the d pawn? Hmm, probably not. But that leads to this kind of structure, which is very difficult to play. So he managed to get um, to pose lots of difficult, difficult problems for the opponent out of a very classical and not very exciting at first looking opening. So very nice play here by the world champion who's got the third win in a row. So he's really on fire now and uh, is co-leading the event together with Caruana. Both are on plus three now. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the coverage here of round uh, seven of the Tata Steel event. I hope to do the round eight video a little bit uh, earlier <laughs> than this one. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit busy nowadays. Okay, well, thanks for watching.